So welcome back to the Grant Stefan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we're gonna to be having Grant on the channel and he was able to amass a real estate portfolio of $11 million that now nets him, no joke, like $50,000 a month. And he has a few questions on whether or not he's moving too fast or leveraging his money too much. So I'll give my thoughts on that. And also we're gonna figure out exactly how he was able to build up this portfolio. And by the way, we're trying something new today. I actually asked him to film himself and then we're gonna to try to like intercut it in this video. So this is brand new, never been done before. So if you guys like videos like this with this like editing style, let us know down below in the comments. And if you like it, then we'll try to do more like this. But, and if you don't like it, then still hit the like button. So with that said, let's bring on Grant and uh, see what he has to say. So Grant, welcome to the Graham Stefan Show. What's going on? Hey Graham, hey, I'm really glad that you picked my story and I'm very excited to be here today. I uh, really and truly, uh, my, I've always been interested in business. My father uh, actually was a first generation car dealer. I worked for his company and uh, now with everything going on, I have grown from my dealership salaries and everything else as well as my rentals. I now have 30 rentals, eight under construction and a lot of projects that if we have time, maybe talk about today and they're grossing quite a bit, but my net is right around $54,000 a month. That's cool. Congratulations. That's, that's a lot of money. That's, that's crazy, yeah, I, man. I, wait, how many rentals? So I have 30 rentals with uh, eight under construction because one of my favorite things to do, and I feel like it's my bread and butter, is actually a uh, brand new ground up construction. Congratulations. So, I mean, what can I help you with? That, that's incredible. I should be asking you for advice. <laughs> no, not at all. No, the reason I'm actually wanting to be uh, interviewed on your show is, is my um, properties moving too fast? Are they moving too slow? Because no matter what, I watch your show and I see people that are making X amount of dollars and it's normally <laughs> half a million dollars a month to, to what I'm doing or to, to really normal things. So I just, I would love your advice on where I'm at, where I'm going and, and if I'm going at the right pace. Yes, yeah, so you're making 50,000 a month and you're asking if, if you're moving too fast. So virtually every time I get 20% saved up to put down another property, I end up doing so. And basically on my whole entire portfolio, I owe right around 55 to 60%, so. Okay, so are you worried about what, over leveraging yourself? Right, so if in the event I start taking out, you know, um, HELOCs or lines of credit to go and buy other properties, it's gotten to the point where there's a lot of money available um, and I just want to make sure I make the right, uh, the right choices. Gotcha. I'm curious. So how did you get to that point? Uh, when I was 18 years old, I ended up starting selling cars uh, while going to school. What ended up happening was, uh, I was paid seven fifty an hour or commission, whichever comes first, uh, working about 72 to 75 hours a week while going to school. School started to become an afterthought. Um, and truth be told how I started my my portfolio is my brother was actually building apartments and he got uh, a little overwhelmed at 23 years old, sold them. And uh, I got in there, bought my first um, apartment. It was half of a duplex, bought it for 96,000 bucks, put $10,000 down, had a very limited 750 credit score and uh, somehow got financed. That's the way to do it. And then what from there? And then you just expanded from, from buying more? Yeah, I realized soon after that by building a um, duplex like he did, I would be able to live in one side, rent the other side, and instead of having to pay someone else a profit, I'd be able to make that profit myself as well as limiting my monthly expenses to zero because by living in one side, renting the other side, I virtually um, you know, got down to zero monthly expenses for my, my property. Got it. And are you still selling cars at this point or did you make the transition now to just full-time real estate? Oh, no, sir. So that, that's that's one thing, too. I enjoy work. I see that you say that a lot on your channel, and I definitely understand that you, you're, you're always going. I enjoy working. So what ended up happening as I sold cars for 4.5 years, ended up doing really well, averaged right around $75,000 uh, a year, and you know was the first one in my family to be number one selling cars and doing all those other things. Uh, I'm very passionate about just um, doing my absolute best. And what ended up happening, I got promoted and uh, ended up going to finance manager, broke every single record in our company's history and ended up making around $350,000 a year while staying in that duplex until I built my first home and I used the duplex that I was living in to actually pay that mortgage. And I just kind of call that house hacking at its finest. That's, that's incredible. So what about now? How do, how do you go from that to 30 rental properties? So my journey continued. Uh, another thing I'm extremely proud of is um, when it all boils down to it, 
I've made over 15 managers that have done a really good job and made the best manager I've ever made ended up being uh, taking my records down from the finance department, making right around $220,000 a month. And uh, what happened was I became a sales manager, ran a sales team, and I just started to expand. One thing about this call is I get nervous on things I haven't done before. And if we end up having time, I'm, I'm looking at buying a subdivision. Um, it's it, it would be really cool for you to tell me what your thoughts on it would be going into spec houses. And so the problem is when I bought my first, when I built my first five apartments, I realized I can do this. I can do more. And then it just blew up from there. So. Got it. Well, congratulations on all of your success. I think that's incredible. So what, what is your concern now is just leveraging too much too soon? I would say, yeah. So I'll give you some numbers on the portfolio. If, uh, if you'd like to hear them, um, the total, uh, market value for my portfolio is right at 11 million, 300,000. Uh, I only owe right under 6 million. And so my total, you know, net worth to the portfolio is right around 5.3 million. And the thing about that is there's a lot of room to, to grow. And I just, as I said, when you get to this point, it, you have to decide like, where do we go from here? You know, like, do we keep going or we stay at the same pace? And that's why somebody like you would be uh, very beneficial on this. Okay. So here's my honest thought. You're making 50 something thousand dollars a month net from the rental properties as it is right now, correct? Yes, sir. How much are you making from any other source of income? Uh, so the dealership, um, even though it's, um, you know, a family business, I make 25,000 a month from there. And that's pretty much what most of my managers make, uh, especially uh, being that now I'm the director. So just to kind of hint on that, I, I, I'm now the director of over uh, all of our stores and uh, I make 25,000 a month there. And then my rental income's, you know, 12,000 of that. That's after all expenses. Uh, I own a business in Texas. Uh, it's a juice uh, bar. It's called Main Squeeze Juice Company. That one makes about $5,000 a month. And then I do a bunch of other things, coaching calls, uh, selling Rolexes, you know, uh, on the side, you know. So when you factor all that in and, and, and mortgage pay down, it, it ends up being around that number. Okay, gotcha. How much do you spend every year? So spending has been something that your channel has um, helped me with tremendously. I've always been very frugal. Like I told you, I used to barely spend any money at all. But when you start making more money, uh, I try to keep it in check. Uh, I do have eight animals. So I have eight dogs. And so they eat a lot of food, about 1500 bucks a month there. But truth be told, we spend about, you know, $5,000 a month with the dogs. And I don't include my mortgage in that because it, it comes out uh, with all my rental properties and things like that. So I thought for a second you were about to say eight animals, like some exotic animal. I, I just uh -huh. finished watching Tiger King. So I'm thinking eight animals. I'm thinking what, like chimpanzees, like you have an elephant, a zebra, some crazy stuff no, like that. All right. So dog, the dogs are Tim. My only thought is this. I, I At least for myself, I found that the more money you end up making, the less risk you want to take because it you there, there becomes no point then to take more risk or take on extra work when you don't see that big of a difference in your lifestyle like going from making 50 to 60 thousand dollars a month for taking on more risk you're not going to see a big big boost in your lifestyle by doing that um so i mean my thought is as far as growing too quickly i think it's totally fine but i personally would just recommend you take on some safer projects not take as much risk, put maybe a little bit more money down. It might not be the best investment decision from a number standpoint, but I think it's worth it, at least for the peace of mind. Just as you grow your portfolio, you could begin to dial back the amount of risk you take, and you're still making substantially more than you'll ever possibly spend. But now you have a little bit more fun, you have a little bit more creativity to go after the projects you like that just aren't as risky. Sure. What, do you, what do you think of that? No, yeah. I I could tell you about where I think it's going, but for sure, you know, and, and that's, that's another thing is like, what is less risky? So, you know, building at the pace I'm doing, uh, I do, um, in those numbers have a ton of land. We have a land, we have enough land to build another hundred units. So the, the, the thing about that is it's just, and lately with everything going on with the illness, they've just, people have been calling me left and right to buy their projects. And that's kind of, where my, my portfolio since I started the channel with 13 units and now we're all the way up to 30 with eight under construction and a lot of stuff going on. It's just, you're, you're, you're 100% right. And I need to start taking a breath, but 
when that deal, good deal comes, you know, do you pass up on it? That's the that's the biggest issue I've had lately. What are your other investments? I'm just kidding, um, I'm just so, curious because that, that's one thing that I've started doing is finally diversifying. Finally, sure. I'm just getting out of real estate a little bit. I'm not getting out, but like just putting my money elsewhere. In, index funds for me. Index funds well, and, and some some stocks. And that way I have my money spread out a little bit more. So for sure, and I, I, I've got a, a, a bet with you. I don't know if we can talk about that on here, but I've got a bet with you uh, from the mentor group, which is an amazing place right there. I, I very much enjoy it. And uh, I have you know, half a million dollars invested in my stock portfolio that I share on my channel all the time. And uh, that's ultimately why I'm starting to use equity out of my real estate versus cash on hand. Because you know, at thirty years old, there's only so much cash you could have you could have saved and off of good deals. I would almost recommend if you have five and a half in real estate to build up a index fund portfolio or a stock portfolio of maybe two million. Maybe just fifty percent of what you have invested in real estate should be spread out somewhere else. I just think that would probably be the safe thing to do. That's something I I didn't do really until like. I, t I, t I was always doing it, but never to like a serious extent. It was always just like, oh, that's in the back of my mind every year. I'll just throw a little bit of money. But now I'm taking it a lot more seriously because I'm realizing that like if some of the smartest people out there, Kevin O'Leary, uh, they're all telling me to basically diversify a little bit. I start taking that seriously. And then I realize like, wait a second, they're, they're right. So, I mean, I could almost parrot their advice that they gave to me back to you. And it, so it sounds like you're in a, we're in a similar position. You have, you have more rentals than I do. But to do something similar and to have a little bit more money stashed away, I think it diversified into index funds and just something else just in case something happens to real estate. That's it. You have a fallback. And the good news with stocks is that they're easy to liquidate in the event you need to sell it and you find like a deal you just can't pass up. Selling is so easy. You know, it's just, I don't know, 20 seconds of work to go and sell whatever you want to sell uh, and you'll have money available to you. Sure. I, I completely agree with you. The $2 million, though, that's going to take some time to, to build that thing up. But hopefully, with the uh, fact that I bought when the Dow was down to 18000 hopefully after all of the uh, roller coaster uh, or kangaroo market we've got going, we'll, we'll help with that tremendously. Right. So. I mean, my thought is with your income, there shouldn't be any reason why you can't stash away, what, like ten or 15000 a month? Sure. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would just, I would just stash some money away. I'd maybe even 50-50 it. Half the money that you save goes towards real estate, the other half goes to index funds, at least temporarily, at least for another few years, five years or so, you boost that up, and then once you have a uh, sufficient enough uh, stock portfolio, then you could start taking a little bit more risk with real estate if that's something you wanted to, but at least you're diversified. Yeah, 100% agree. That, I think, would be my only advice. And I, I can't even take credit for that advice. I mean, this is something that other people have been telling me now for like well over a year. So I'm, it, it's, it's taken me a year to listen to other people's advice. So now I'm doing it. And now I have zero regrets whatsoever about doing it. Uh, I'm still keeping cash on the side for real estate, but at least I've been placing a, a larger emphasis lately on index funds and stocks. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I saw the episode with Kevin O'Leary and uh, I saw all that. So yeah, for sure. And I think that's great advice. I, I, I agree with you. So do you have any other questions for me? Anything else I can answer for you? Uh, I do. Uh, I don't know. Um, if you'd like me to ask this one on the channel, but as far as any advice you'd have for my channel, because, you know, we've been putting out content, trying to do, I've taken your course and it's just, uh, it's, it's going well, but I just anything. Cause I know you've seen a few of my videos. So. Yes. I would say, uh, make them as simple as possible. I, I've, I've always said that, uh, I will continue saying it. Make it so that a teenager, someone who's 14, 15 years old, would be entertained by your video and would watch it and can understand what's going on and come out of it at least learning something. Something I found usually the, the more basic and broad it is, the more it's going to appeal to people. And then from there, you know, there's a, there's a smaller and smaller percentage of people who are interested in the more advanced content. So I would say in the beginning, it's really important to go as basic as you can. And then over time, you could always get a little bit more niche and those people are really going to be into it. But just... Uh, I think having a really catchy thumbnail, I, I've noticed lately dramatic thumbnails. I know you guys all talk about me like, ooh, I got a headache, you know, I'm having a bad day. It's true. The dramatic thumbnails uh, definitely entice people's emotions to want to click on the video a little bit more. It just, 
when you when you see a face that looks distressed, it, it, it piques your curiosity. So you want you want a thumbnail that makes you think like, wait, wait, what's going on here? It, it just it's got to make you curious to want to click on it, and then from there, I think some just very thought out, concise, basic information where anyone could be entertained by it is really important. For sure, yeah, I I one hundred percent agree. I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, by the way, and, and sometimes you have to lead with those numbers first um, because otherwise it, it's it's hard for people to envision the end result if you're talking about like, I'm going to teach you how to buy 10 rental properties. People care more about like what those rental properties w- will do for them. So they will care more about like, how can I make $5,000 a month investing in real estate rather than I'll teach you how to invest in real estate and then you can make 10000 a month or 5000 a month, whatever it is. So I always lead with the end result first and then I'll share how to get there but the the end goal is always for me the most important and that's what i intend to focus on sure so i I think as long as you do that consistently and it takes time it's a lot of work but as long as you could do that just over and over and over again repetitively the better you're going to get at it uh and the more people will start to watch yeah really appreciate it and I, i i agree i think my videos are uh you know need to need some fine tuning and that's gotta ask the person that's 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 doing all these amazing things on, on YouTube. Definitely. And uh, you know what? I'll go to your latest video. As soon as this video, but if, if you guys want, just like this video and then I'll link your, I'll link your video in this. I'll actually, I'll link your channel in the description and we're just going to like bomb your channel for the YouTube <laughs> algorithm. Of course, let's go ahead and do well, I really, that. really appreciate that. It, it struggling YouTuber could definitely use it. So. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I hope that helps. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch if we need anything else from you. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Have a good day. See ya. Bye. Bye. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. Posts are pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. As in the podcast, the Iced Coffee Hour, new videos being posted every single Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And lastly, you guys know it, if you guys want those two free stocks, use the link down below in the description, and Weeble is going to be giving you two free stocks when you deposit $100 on the platform, with one of those stocks valued all the way up to $1,400. So if you want those two free stocks, use the link down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.